welcome back to the channel. That's our 2012 TDI Jetta that died about three and a half months ago. Uh, lost oil pressure and we don't know why. Today we're gonna figure it out, or at least tear some engines down. And this is a deep dive into the Volkswagen turbo diesel oil pressure loss. Now an important part of, of this is I need an engine stand and uh, this is our rotary support vehicle. But um, we're gonna take the rotary to go get an engine stand so we can tear down one of the blown up motors for the Volkswagen. Let's go. Ah, eh, we got power. Oh, she's tired. All right. This is a very neglected 92 RX-7. Uh, it's a right-hand drive model, obviously. Uh, so Japan got them in 92, we did not. We didn't get them until 94. But let's go get a engine stand. Girl made it. I'm not spending a hundred dollars on an engine stand for 20 minutes of use. You can just roll it around on the ground. Look at that car. Wanted to take a second and share the backside of this motor and what everything looks like for those of you who are trying to work on this yourself. This big unit here is your EGR cooler. Uh, that's tucked up under the DPF. This is your outlet for the turbo. Normally the DPF would sit right in here and then make a big line down out the bottom here. Uh, this pipe would go to your DPF as well. It's kind of tight back here. Uh, if you want to do the EGR DPF delete in the car, uh, it, it's it's very tight. You can get the subframe to drop a little bit for some more space to get the DPF out, but look how this intake goes together here. This bit of hardware, you unscrew that bit of hardware and then you rotate the whole intake to pop off. That's just silly. Seeing that sucker to come off easily. Maybe not. Ow, all good. Slice my finger open. That was fun. Okay, now the little electrical tape can't fix. But it's off. About two hours later, ugh, turbo's ready to just pop right off. Ew, nice. Now the turbo's off, the EGR cooler comes 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 right off. Right right off. Hold on a second. After carefully removing the EGR cooler, I think I'm gonna roll the motor over onto this side. See how much of a mess we can make with some oil. Sucker off there before it tips over. See if we can get it moved. Oh, she wants to go. Look at that. Oh, that's a lot of metal in that sucker. I don't know if you can see the sparkles, but uh. Yeah, well, that's, look at this chunk of bearing right here. Nice. <sighs> Tells me we starved it of oil one way or another. Whew. I don't know if you can see in the oil pickup, but holy goodness. Look at the bearing material packed in there. I'm gonna have to bring you in closer for that. <laughs> Here's the bearings from the first motor failure. Uh, 
still packed on in there. Uh, this is the oil pickup, of course. This was the one that I did two laps on Road Atlanta with. Uh, it is possible we starved the motor for oil. That is a lot of bearing material. Oh my God. This is your 2012 TDI Jetta uh, non-counterbalanced chain driven oil pump. These are known to be very robust. It does not have the counterbalancing mechanism uh, that you would see on the earlier cars. I don't see any real reason why this motor ate itself. Just rip these off real quick. Here we go, free bird. Look at the amount of goo and sludge in this oil pan. No wonder why the motor ate itself. Change oil, people. I'm fairly certain that this motor was on its way out when I bought it a month before it let go. I'm no mechanic, but I, I don't think I should struggle to turn that. That's super hard to turn. Why? Now I'm curious. Okay, I just tapped the case with a hammer. Okay, coming apart. Why is it so hard to turn? I don't understand. That doesn't seem right. As you can see, pump sits in on offset and it spins around. It just pulls oil through. That's all, that's how it works. I do not know if there's any specific way to remove these caps. That bearing looks all right. I mean, some scorching to it, but it's unusual to think that a crank bearing would fail. What I don't have is 12 point sockets to undo these. Volkswagen being what it is. Hey, we're gonna put Torx, triple square, hex heads, whatever. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's our offending cylinder. I wonder if you could just <laughs> slap some bearings in it. It's fun to think. That'll be your one, number two, number two rod bearing let go and ate itself. Wonder why specifically number two. There's motor number one. Uh, I, I think it's a combination of lack of maintenance by the previous owner and then uh, me taking it to the track. Uh, spun the number two rod bearing. A lot of sludge in the, in the oil pan. Uh, mind you, I, this motor popped uh, three weeks after I picked up the car. So, take a look at this pan. Look at that glitter. And the sludge. That's just amazing how much sludge is in there. That is gross. Very gross. I want to point out some interesting things here. There's oil on the bottom of the car. And oil coming off the bottom of the oil cooler. That's interesting. Why is there oil everywhere? Under here, my friend. But there's none, there hasn't, there's none dripping here on the ground. And this car has been sitting here for three months. What? Okay, well, the plot thickens then, I guess. Let's get these intake pipes out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen, the smoking gun. Hmm. All right, well, clearly we have a failure of great proportion here. 
this gasket is very uh, hard. Oh yeah, there it is. It's cracking. So, yeah, no good. So I'm gonna run this thing through the parts cleaner for a bit, try to clean that up. Okay, parts washer's running. Sorry about the noise. We're in here, got the housing apart. There is one more gasket between the housing and the block, which requires those 10 mils, and then of course the oil feed line to be taken off. So we'll pull that apart, get the top part of the housing out, and then we'll do the main inner gasket. I may only use it once or twice a year, but man, that parts washer does a pretty good job. Okay, real quick and dirty while we have everything out. This is your oil filter housing. In the bottom of it, here, mounts your oil cooler. All right, so that sits on that, and then all that goes into that. Now what can happen with this housing, is this O-ring, as you can see, can fail, judging by the amount of oil. This is what it looks like right now. It took me about two hours to get to this point. So if you can do it faster, good on you. That's, that's how long it took me. This is all it is, just a boop. Sits on there, squishes it, bobs your uncle. I found that it was easiest to disassemble this in the car, drop the bottom cap out, then disassemble everything on top of the car uh, so you can get to the rest of the hardware for the housing and eventually get to a point where you can disconnect the coolant hoses which will allow this to drop out the bottom of the car and then you can get more work in to get this free. You may not have to go as far as taking the whole housing off though I do recommend it because once you're to this point it's only a matter of about five minutes until you're, you have this off. Getting everything out took me about two and a half hours. Uh, I'm not a professional, I've never done this before, but uh, there's information for you. Do with it as you please. This seal is different than the factory seal. Um, I'm not sure why the factory seal had so much of an inner piece, but I did verify with a buddy of mine, shout out to you, Zeke. <laughs> But uh, he does independent diesel repair, he does this kind of stuff all the time. And he said, yeah, that's what it looks like. So let's chuck it in. And we're mostly back together. It's been down for three months. Uh, January 5th, I think the car went down. It's April 1st tomorrow. So we're almost four months into this. Pretty sure I use my fishing boat battery more for jumping cars than I do for fishing. There we go again. Okay, now we're ready. Here goes nothing. Oh. Bing, boat's open. Stability control. Getting the oil light. Probably put that back on. Quick check of the underside here. I don't seem to be leaking any more oil, but it's hard to tell. Okay, it's been running about five minutes now. Get a little RPM. Lame. I don't know. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of work to find out that it still does it. Something's wrong. We're gonna drain some oil out of it. I got new oil. So we'll see if we got sparkles. Oh, 
looks pretty good. Maybe. Yeah, there's definitely glitter in that puppy. Spend 10 minutes, no errors. Hey, you're, you're recording. Okay. Go ahead. Same over here, over there, wherever you want. We just got all the street lights to take care of. Mm -hmm. Tire pressure light, traction control light. We don't need traction control. Yeah, not what we're going. <laughs> it did briefly flash the oil pressure light. Oh, really? Yeah, when I first started it. So let's see what it does. Off on a maiden voyage. Maiden voyage. Ooh, all the lights are gone. What? That's awesome, dude. Oh, shit. <laughs> Back on the road again. Oh, you don't have your seatbelt on. No. Ah. Oh, fuck. There it is. See, it just flashes real quick. It see? goes back. Oh, it's come back, back on. I don't understand. That's no oil pressure right I'm now. Gonna get a good shot of it. I'm gonna shot of it. Right. There it goes. Yep. So there we have it. Um, first motor killed by lack of maintenance uh, by the previous owner. And me taking it to Road Atlanta, hot lapping it, uh, an unmaintained car. I think potentially I used the same oil filter housing uh, from the first motor to the second motor. Potentially, maybe there's an oil pressure loss happening then. It's tough to say. So the second motor, I think definitely that uh, upper O-ring failed and we lost oil pressure because we, we took the car on a road trip uh, we probably lost oil pressure during the road trip, and it pumped the oil out of it. And then the next day when I went to go to work, that's when we didn't have our oil pressure. That's when the, the motor ate shit. So, it is a service item. Uh, I don't know exactly the service interval on that upper O-ring. Uh, I would consider changing it every 50,000 miles or so. If you have a car that you don't know if it's ever been done on, do it. Uh, it's a $12 seal and it's easy enough to get the lower uh, cap off the oil cooler so you can put the new O-ring in it. In my case, it caused the loss of another motor. Speaking with Zeke at Zeke's Auto Works, three grand, $3,500 into replacing another motor if we decide to do that. Uh, I would happily pay him to do that. I don't, I don't think there should be any uh, cuts on service or whatnot, but I just, I don't know. Maybe it's time to K-swap the TDI. That'd be fun, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, appreciate you dropping a like, commenting, subscribing, letting me know you're still here. Stay tuned to find out what we do with this car. How about you get in your garage and fix something, huh? Have a good night.